Let's go. Yo, YouTube, say hi to Twitch. Twitch, say hi to YouTube. Round two. Round two. This is round two. This is round two of uh, the Ed... Bro, I would say our Edmar Madness. Edmar Madness uh, Memorial. This was an invitational tournament. We already did round one where I had black. Crazy lines. This one is called Equal. Bruh. So, uh, okay, I'll show you what happened. So I'm playing this IM. This is my second time I'm playing him. Actually with white. No, third. We've played three times. The well, first game was a loss in Jobaba when I was in an inexperienced. In fact, um, so, you know, one time for like, I was inexperienced the first time uh, we played, you know, Jobaba. I played Jobaba against him and like lost. Didn't know what I was doing. It was fun, though. It was very exciting. Back to Alan there, right? But the second time we, I drew with black. And then this is the third time we've played. So he's an international master of strong. So here's the game. So here, because I played Joe Baba already with white, I, I I wanted to play something else. So I played E4. Now, here here we go. Bruh. In the last 18 games, I've only lost. Sorry. I have not lost with the white pieces. So that's good to understand. I did not lose at all with white in the last 18 games that I played in two tournaments back to back. And this was the only E4 game. The only the rest was D4, but this was the only E4 game that I played because I played Joe Bava against him before. Only reason why I didn't play Joe Bava is because I played it already because he was going to get Joe Bava. He was, he was. But I was like, okay, uh, play E4. All right, so we went E4, C5, and then I went C3. I was actually expecting French from him. I saw some Sicilians that he played, but I was actually expecting French, which he played later on in the tournament. But he went C5. I went C3. C3 is a seal for the kill. You know, I got a course on that, I think. Still. Let me see if that's still in the chat. There we go. C3 Sicilian. Yep. So, okay. So I got C3. He goes Knight of 6. We go E5. This is all theory. And by the way, accuracy for this game. Let me actually. Put it in here just so you know I'm not I'm not uh not fooling fooling with you here. Here it is 97 1. Look at that boy. 97 97 1 and 96 6. 97 percent accuracy. So it was a very, very nice game, but it was it was called equal. And I'll show you why. So this is my thoughts in this game. After E5, I hit the knight. He moves the knight around, right? And then D4. Takes knight f3. I actually, he plays something else. He plays something else against this. Like, I don't remember what it was because I looked at his file, but like, you know, it doesn't matter now because like the games are over. Y'all were cooking. We was definitely cooking pretty hot there. But he went knight d5, d4 takes. And then I, I remember playing some Smith Moore or seeing, seeing, um, who was it? Who was it? Esserman. Mark Esserman. It has the Moore files. Which are really strong, but I was like, I don't remember any of these files. So I'm not going to play something that I don't remember. Like, I, I'm just not going to do that. So, but I did spend a little bit of time trying to figure out where I want to go, but not the Mora territory. You know, because he is also good as well. Johnny, thanks for the follow. So I went Knight of 3, bro. Yeah, shout out to, shout out to my dog. Kamski plays a Mac. Queen takes D4. Yeah, Queen takes D4 actually is really cool. This is a, let me flip the board here. This is a line that is underrated. It is underrated. And they go like F4 and like bring the queen back to F2. Like it's a very strange line. And I thought about that, chess lover, but I was like, I don't know what I'm doing here. And I'm not going to be out here looking crazy. So after C takes D4, I play Knight F3. Let's play Knight F3. Very easy. Very easy. So after Knight F3. He goes d6, right? The theory is it here is heavy. Bishop c4. Yeah, yeah, there's some heavy theory here, correct? With bishop c4, back to b3. You let him take, and then knight takes, then d6, and then or, let's d, e6. Here takes, like, you, you move the queen, I think, to e2 in some lines. And after knight f3, correct. I do remember this, so I remember, I remember this. And actually, after d6, I go bishop c4. So I actually went for this. Because I'm like, I'll figure it out type of thing. Because I like these type of positions, I like open open positions and tactics. But he takes on e5. So I'm currently 
down a pawn because like think about this right like he takes one pawn i develop you know he pushes i develop he takes another pawn so currently right now i'm i'm down two pawns like literally so i take the pawn back before it gets crazy there's now threats of stuff like knight takes f7 in the air so he goes e6 he goes e6 and now okay white to move this is not that much like it's not bad it's not a you know a a spectacular move here but it's white to move like what do you do do you take this pawn back how do you take this pawn back you have a lot of options here so what where do you actually play thanks for the follow p jar pizza lover says hey james love the content thanks bro i'll see you over there on tiktok we analyze in round two here from uh ednar madness I, I played in this tournament right before us masters queen f3 oh, mitcher mitcher you want to play queen f3 you want to go for a mate Okay, queen f3. Hit f7. Queen f3. I see you. No, over there on TikTok, say queen f3. Like, right, this is, man, y'all just aggressive. Chat, hey, man, hold on. Bruh. Chat out here, just really aggressive. Queen f3. All right, all right. Just trying to make like two separate channels, both saying the same thing, interconnected. I like the energy. You guys are on. Queen a, a4 check. I think that's a nice check. I didn't like knight d7. Queen takes d4. Kevin over there. Castles from chess riddle. Queen takes d4. Nice. Nice. So what I did play here, actually, chess riddle is correct. I actually castled. I like this idea because now there's tricks involved. If he goes d takes c3 if he goes d takes c3 right i was actually going to get into this type of stuff of knight takes c3 if knight takes c3 we can do queen takes d8 king takes and i thought about this is what i calculated chat i mean i'm telling you coe right seal coe here right so i do knight takes f7 king e7 was the move i thought king e8 i think was worse but king e7 um to defend this pawn because there's some lines where with the king on being on e8 when I take, I can get out after like a rookie one and put pressure on having the tempo of bishop takes e6 being available to me. So king e7 actually will be a little bit more accurate. After knight takes, king e7, I take on h8. I actually saw him moving the knight here to e4. I go rook e1. After rook e1, I thought knight f6 was going to be played. I go bishop g5. And after bishop g5, he has g6, so he can go bishop g7 next. And this is what I calculated. And I was like, what do I do? when this happens because he's going to go for this which is possible but it feels really good after bishop e3 and then they have this line um i think from the engine it was like here and then i check he goes back or something i don't remember i think it was king d well king king d8 w wherever he moves though i can move the knight back to f7 right and then there's cases where if he goes king e8 i can take take rook takes king d7 i go rook e7 and then this is just over so I was calculating, I calculated up to this point right here after uh, Bishop G5, G6, and I was trying to figure out, like, what, where do I go next? What's up, Daniel Shipper? What's up, Ganty? Hope the stream's going well. What up, Big Dan, the man? Taking a lot of the pictures on the Instagram chat, so if y'all want to go to IG and check the pictures, socials, Daniel Shipper. What's up, bro? Yeah, so I, I calculated all of this. That's why I castled, because if, if I castle... And he takes, this is a very forcing sequence, because after knight takes, I'm now threatening this knight. I have a lot of threats going on. A lot of threats. I'm developed, I'm castled, I'm like a few moves away from completing development. I'm also attacking this. Black has like all the pieces on the back rank. This is really strong. This is really strong. So, after castles, you know, I get up and I walk around. You know, like, when you hit the clock and you like stand up and just drink your water and like... Walk around and just big dog flexing, you know, feeling good about the move you played. And then he goes, and then he goes, Bishop E7. Like, like, come on, bro. Dang. Can you do something? Like, you know, he's very strong. So he didn't, he just developed and was like, I'm just going to castle, which is correct. That's right. Like, just develop your pieces. So I took back because I kind of have to now. He castles and I need to develop. So I go Knight C3. He takes, takes, and then knight d7, right? Now, with the knight d7 option, he wants to trade pieces. I have a damage structure, so he wants to, like, you know, trade pieces, maybe even trade queens. 
but it is white to move chat so where do you actually go now what is the sequence of moves you play now chess riddle says f4 where do you go chat what are you going to play here now bishop f4 nice development from j masters we've just developed the bishop he says get it off the back rank bishop f4 and we saw f4 bishop d3 seems like a nice move says chess riddle aiming the bishop to this side of the board i'm curious about the aggressive line to checkmate with queen how bad is that against line yeah i mean it depends like you can play a lot of things but you got to be careful out here because uh, they're they're able to defend pizza lover on tiktok says rookie one kg4 it's actually in because k is for king to g4 meaning knight to g4 so not trading i do uh, agree with that idea i was looking at that as well i moved the knight type thing Draymoto, what's up, bro? We in here. Welcome to the stream. Uh, if you are watching, make sure you guys subscribe to the YouTube too as well, as uh, we are posting it there. As we're on Twitch and TikTok streaming right now. So knight to d7, right? Knight f3, I don't want to trade any minor pieces from Mike Saylor. I was thinking the same thing too as well. We need two with ideas of knight takes f7, correct? So guys, you're all correct. And this is what I said here. At the end of the day, I was like, okay, well... If I want to trade, I want to trade on my terms only. So I go f4. And why is it my terms? Because if you take with the knight, I take with the f pawn, and I just have this lasting attack. I have potential to attack you. I have potential to attack you. That's the only reason why I'm playing f4. And look at this bishop. This looks like a French defense, which, of course, he was a player as well. But this is a bad bishop. So I can play against this, or at least try to, and try to develop an attack very fast. Very fast. That's my goal. That's where I was going to say that. It says 240. What's up, NJ Chess? What's good? How are you? So, I went F4. And then he doesn't take. He goes Knight F6. So he gets out the way. He gets out the way, which is natural. But now I got some space. So I'm like, cool, bro. I go queen f3. All right? I want some rook lift action eventually too as well. Reason why I didn't rook lift immediately. I didn't like, you know, you always have to think, what is your opponent going to do? And this seemed like a cool plan. But I didn't like after rook f3, he could go knight e4. This is like a really strong move. The idea here is that if I try to get rid of this knight, he could go f5. He does damage the structure. But the fact that he can do this is kind of unappealing to me. Kind of un unappealing. What's up, Jess? What's going to see? Dr. Bishop, you know, it's just annoying. F5, and like, I have to figure out how to get rid of this knight. Game recap. Yeah, this is round two of Ednar Madness, Jess. So this one's called Equal. Equal. All right. So I go Queen F3 with the idea of maybe a Queen H3, and then, you know, bring all the pieces to the party. You know what I mean? Like, come on. All right. We want from eight. So after Queen F3, he goes Queen C7. And this, I mean, the guy is strong. Obviously, you don't just get IM, right? Gotta be strong here, all right? So the idea here is really, really strong, really, really strong. And af after the game, I briefly uh, was like, "Hey, I missed this idea." And he was like, "Yeah, I was gonna go for this." And I was like, "I know, like that's why I spent some time here, because this is, there's a very cool idea involved with this move, queen to c7." But black, you know, black goes queen c7, so it's white to move. Where do you actually go here? In fact, you can go queen c2 and queen b3 something after knight e4. Yeah, but you know, Alan, I'm not attacking. It's very slow for me, Alan. And you know I'm not a slow player there. Like, yeah. I don't play that type of chess, Alan. You already know me. So you know I'm not going to go that route. You know I'm not going to do that. Bishop d3, queen takes. Bishop takes h7 obviously happened. And of course, chess right? Oh, yes. No, but there's an idea attached to this whole thing, which was really cool, I thought. So it's white to move, chat. Where do you actually go? Bishop d3. We got another bishop d3 there. Rook B1 from just cooling on TikTok. It ain't slow if they play F5. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, if they play F5, right? Which is correct. And then I have to go like Bishop D3 and take. Engine says that I can allow that. Bring the Bishop back to D3, actually. Take on E4, and you just have the eternal weakness of E4 and E6 pawns that are doubled. Very strange. Uh, is it G4? You're a legend. <laughs> I, I was definitely considering G4. But the reason why I didn't go G4, right? And watch this, chat. If I go g4, he has this amazing move, guys. Both of them that he can play, which is b6 or b5. Are you kidding me? b6. 
with the idea of Finn Catalina Bishop. You're asking yourself, well, why doesn't I take the rook? Well, go ahead, take the rook, watch where you look. My goodness, it's gonna be a wrap immediately. What are you doing with your life? After bishop b7, right? You take on a7 and rook a8, and my queen's trapped. My queen's trapped. Now, of course, engine says this is equal, but like, bro, I just lost my queen. Like, I'm not even doing this. This is, I mean, why would I go g4 just to give the queen up and then some type of exchange? Well, like, this is not smart at all. This is not smart. This is not smart. My queen is absolutely trapped. Yes, I get, you know, some pieces for it, but this is not smart. You know, you're going to have to put like an engine here to be able to have um, some chances here with white. It's just not fun to play. And it's very easy for white to go wrong as opposed to black. So I saw this whole idea. When you play queen c7, I'm like, oh, bro, I'm not the, bro, I'm not the hitting before I split him. Like I was immediately hype about this idea. So I was trying to get it to work. I was looking at if g4, he goes b6. I even looked at, okay, what if I go g5 first? He hits me with bishop b7. And I thought about the queen sack chat after pawn takes, right? But this doesn't work, in fact. He doesn't have to. If he takes the queen, this is the whole idea is obviously takes. And then, you know, I'm hitting the rook too as well. So he can, you know, queen takes e7 and rook takes f3. And I have this material. But am I actually winning is the hard part. And this is going to be a very long game. He's very solid. I remember calculating this. And I thought that he was very solid right now. He's very solid. Uh, Alice, it looks like fun. Rook b1 says, if g4 wasn't played, I would go for it. <laughs> All right, Jesse, I understand. Like, g4 is something that I really wanted to go for. And if he, But if he didn't play queen c7, I was probably going to go g4. Which tell you the strength of how strong this guy is, really. Like, I mean, he's very underrated. As he played queen c7 with the idea of going for this. After the game, he was like, yeah, I was going for the b6, bishop b7 idea. With with giving up the queen, seeing that it's trapped, you know, in that whole line is ridiculous. I thought this was very strong by him. So he goes queen c7, and then what I do is rook to b1, which is a very clever move. Very clever, because now b6 doesn't work at all. Because if you go b6, I take, bishop b7 takes, and now, ah, uh ah, -uh, ah, uh ah, -uh, oh my goodness. He needs some milk. Oh, you definitely do. Queen takes b6 is now a possibility, so I can get the queen out. This is the whole idea, to go rook b1, right? A very simple move, but it's a lot of calculation into it, right? So this now, after rook b1, I am threatening to go g4. I want to go g4. He goes rook to b8, right? So he goes rook b8. Now it, all of this doesn't work anymore, right? It doesn't work. So I go queen h3. I go queen h3 because if I go g4 now, he's just going to go b6 and like there's no rook in the corner anymore. So I don't want to get hit with the tempo. I don't want to give him that. So I go queen h3. They hit h7 and then g4, g5 type stuff. Right? Have you ever played witty? Oh, no. We're talking. We, we're trying to uh, schedule some stuff, though. About the witty. Yo, so after queen h3, um, I'm going for g4, g5. Same stuff. Same stuff. And then g6. He goes g6 here. And after g6, chat. Okay, it's a question mark move here. Question mark. So it's white to move. What do we play right now? What do we play? Remember, this is called equal, this position. Like, this, this whole thing is called equal. I go, I go, you know, he goes g6, and I'm thinking about, what should I play right now? What should I play? Jess says, f5. Chess lover says, f5 now. Alan says, send f5. d6 looks wrong. No, it says, but bet you thought it LTB. Yeah, it felt wrong. Bishop d3 over there on TikTok. Immediately. Immediately. F5. F5. Okay. All right. Okay, chat. What's the top three moves here, chat? Let's go with that. What's top three engine moves here? Top three moves. You, it doesn't have to be in order, but let's see if you can just find the top three choices. <laughs> one of them you're not going to find. You are not going to find this one, but you will find the other two. But you're not going to find this one by far. I promise you, you're not going to find this one. But it's white to move. So what are the top three moves? We have f5, f5, king h1 from Jess, g5, d5, rook f3. Okay. Something b6? Knight b6? p6? I ain't never seen that. Knight takes g6, pawn f5, bishop d2. Knight, knight g5. Wow. Knight g5. You can't even go there. That's, yeah, you definitely want, that's one I ain't considering either. That's crazy. Rook f3, queen h6 seems like an annoyance. Yeah, correct. King h1. 
right? 95 or 6. Oh, yeah. Is that, you can go there, though. That's great. King A8. Wow. Sheesh. That's right. That, that one. Now, that one going to get you sent to the mental hospital. They're going to know something wrong with you. They're going to know something off immediately when you try that. You know what I'm saying? Queen H6. So, here we go. Here we go. All right. Here are the moves. Move number one is... Let's go, chat. Yes, sir. That's the move. Now, number two, though, number two is rook f3. And number three is, drum roll, please. The third move is rook to b2. Garbage. I don't even know what this You have to. Nobody's doing this. This is. Rook B. Oh yeah, but Rook B too. Hey, you play this. If you play this move, like you, you, it's okay to get checked. You know what I'm saying? Like, if they check you, like, oh, we want to do a fair play check, then yeah, you should 100% get one. You know, Rook to B two. Rook to B two. We don't even know what it does. I have no idea what I'm doing here with this Rook. I mean, B six, and he 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 develops like <laughs> Rook B two, guys. Cool. But I did go with F5. I went with F5 in the game. Inaccuracy, in fact. Uh, Engine says. In fact, they wanted actually... Um, what did they want? In fact. Let's see. They actually wanted... Here, Rook F3. With some ideas of like this. But I wanted to like have this. Like, F3 isn't that easy. It also he has a B5 coming. So I didn't want to give him time to play any of these moves. So I put an F5 in a practical sense of like, I don't want to give you time. Also, think about this. I've read this. I don't remember what book this is from, but it said that when you make a move that they stopped you from doing and you do that move anyway, usually that's a problem. Like, yes, that's going to hurt. Remember that. If you make a move, why did he play G6? Why did he play G6, right? To block the diagonal, but also maybe to stop F5. So when you play it anyway, it is going to, you know, hurt them sometimes in a way, or if they maybe they're expecting it. But psychology wise, they're like, oh, snap, like what just happened? So I play f5 with the idea of getting the bishop out, obviously, and opening up everything. He can take two separate ways. Taking with the, the G pawn is just GG. What are you doing with your life on national television? After queen g3 check, right? We got a few lines. If knight g4, I can actually take. Or play bishop f4. Bishop f4 was probably the strongest here because you just get more pressure here. H3 is coming. Knight takes g4, followed by some double check stuff. Like, this is gross. This is gross. So, check. You have king h8. If king h8, I can play knight takes f7 immediately and winning the queen. Yikes. Oh my goodness, right? This is over. You're getting cooked. You're getting cooked here. So, g takes doesn't make any sense at all, right? Doesn't make any sense. So, he takes with the with the e pawn he takes that pawn he takes that five and then i go bishop h6 instantly here because if you move the rook i mean that's just gg i'm winning this game like i'm winning this game you can't move the rook but then i kind of underestimated his counterplay not counterplay but i mean he just goes bishop e6 after bishop e6 i thought for a little bit i didn't want to get in time trouble so i take he takes back i take the rook he takes back and then believe it or not here chat it is zeros. How? What I gotta do, bro? What I? Chess is hard. Chess is hard. But and I knew this. I was like, how am I not winning this? How am I not winning? Well, let's take a look. If this knight gets to e4, look at how rock solid the knight would be if it gets here. I'm going to have to sacrifice the exchange back as well. This is weak. Yes, there's pressure here, but there's b6. I have a knight, but okay, it's hitting what exactly? He's very, actually, very solid here. A knight can also go to d5. And these are sort of hanging pawns, which aren't the strongest as well here. So this isn't easy to play. You can also have chances where if you drop this pawn, you may actually be worse as white here, especially because this one will be weak. You have an anchor. The bishop's really strong. I was like, this is insane. This is insane, right? I had a 97% accuracy in this game, but it was zeros when I got to this point, being up in exchange. So I'll play a few more moves. I actually go rookie one 
with the idea of I will sacrifice. Hopefully, for whatever reason, he just lost his absolute mind here and plays 94, where I'm going to sack and not even think twice about it. Deal, thanks for the prime. Appreciate it. So free with Twitch Prime. Thanks for the prime, bro. And then check, right? So I'm, I'm going to play this out all day. Because, like, you know, I'm getting some, some, some material back. Feels better. I'm more active. Right. And then what he does is bishop d6. And I was like, oh, here we go. So now this is really strong because there's ideas connected with maybe knight g4 and some type of queen sack, queen, a queen, uh, sorry, king side attack of his own. Right. Having this type of pressure with my king having to step over. My rook, yes, is nice here, but it's not threatening anything. Can't move the knight really, yeah. Knight f3 runs into stuff like queen uh, c3. Knight can still go into e4. Like, weirdly enough, you almost feel like black has some type of initiative because of the accuracy involved by white here, actually. So after bishop d6, um, I went knight f3 and offered a draw here because I'm like, yo, this is, this is not what I expected from being up in exchange. And it, in fact, it's all zeros. And here, he accepted the draw. But after, what you mean, knight takes g6 right now? Oh, no, this is, that's losing chess. It looks good. It looks good, though. Rook takes e6. I thought the same thing, but then king g7. And then he just, you know, like, I sacked for kind of what? You can go rook d6. Okay, takes, takes. Rook takes b7. You get some pawns. I go rook f7, and you reach this position, which is very playable, but you're just down a piece. Like, you're just, you're pushing. You're pushing. You know, you're not, this is unnecessary. Or you, you'll get in some trouble for sure. you get in some trouble. C4, the problem with C4 is I can lose um, some material. In some ways, maybe bishop takes, uh, which I thought he would play, and then takes. So I, I hit the knight, but the knight moves. He goes maybe knight g4. Look at this anchor. I got to move the queen just to kick the knight. Where do I move the queen effectively? And this is hanging. This is hanging. I got to be careful not to lose this or lose another pawn where I could be actually worse, even being down up in exchange, which is strange, bro. Very strange. It was a very strange situation where well, this was uh, all zeros here. I was getting a little time trouble as well, but he was well, we was both getting time trouble, so he's like, yeah, I'm good. Um, should it, yeah, yeah, F5, I think F5, the more of the story for this for me was I didn't have to play F5. I rushed it a little bit. I rushed it a little bit, but F5 is like, I mean, it's such a good move because like it's practical. He made a move trying to stop me from playing it and I get to play it anyway. So it felt really good. The bishop's getting out, but I should have played rook F3. <laughs> Or I should have found, I should have found Rook B2, chat. Like, that's what I should have played. Like, I should have played Rook B2, should have played Rook B2, and, like, don't know what to do next. But, you know, Rook F3 is probably a better move. Just don't know where to go. Rook G3, there's 94 stuff. There may be some sacking possibilities. Like, what does Rook B2 even do exactly? <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. But this was a draw here. This is good to start. You know, I had two draws uh, in the first two rounds, both higher rated, so I'm like perfect. Oh no, I was higher rated in the first, but still, um, it was it was two draws. I mean, draw this guy is very strong, and then we go into the next round. So, but this one was equal, and it was insane. Was F4 the number one computer move for Mike Saylor? Yeah, yeah. F4 was number one. F4 was number one. F4 was correct. Believe it or not, engine right now says it is. It is zeros. It is zeros. It's definitely zeros, but it's practical. It's practical. And here after queen f3, I mean, you have to find a very good move, like queen c7, which was like, this guy is strong. He played queen c7 with, like, if you're missing this idea, my idea was to go like g4, g5. But after I pushed his pawn and be hyper aggressive, like you'll see in my Jababa course drop in December 11th on Chessable, uh, b6, b6, what a move. What a move. And then after takes, bishop b7, queen takes, like I pointed out here. And rook a8 and you lose the queen so this is hence the move i played which is rook b1 to stop this whole line from happening but then he goes rook b8 and he just plays the right moves he gets his pieces developed and even being up in exchange it was not enough to actually win it was just equal yeah, this guy played very strong and here if you look let me actually show y'all real quick the review the review says let me show y'all boom put this on a full screen 97 percent for white 96.6 for black I mean, it's crazy. I had one inaccuracy this entire game, which was F5. The best move that you thought the walk away, drop the mic move was the inaccuracy of the game. F5.
fact it was the only move it was an accuracy other than that almost a perfect game but that's crazy like you know you learn you you live and you learn you learn a lot from it so hopefully you guys learn from this one though and we have the next one coming up in a few days here which will be round three make sure you guys subscribe to the youtube get the merch obviously it's in the video see y'all on the next one perfect so that's for youtube that's like 30 minutes that's nice for that